Welcome to the feature clip on project management highlights in SAP Business One Release 9.3. Project management in SAP Business One has the capacity to help plan, organize, and manage resource tools and develop resource estimates. Today, we're going to show you some of the new project management capabilities in the latest 9.3 release. Understanding, tracking and visualising projects in SAP Business One has never been easier. The context menu from the projects window now links to a project overview form, detailing the entire project and its hierarchical structure in one table. It also links to a new timesheet report form that clearly displays the link between projects and the time worked on the project by employee. You now have the ability to create stage dependencies across different project levels, including subprojects. And a new column under the Stages tab, Finished Date, allows users to define an actual finish date of each stage, which can be compared to the planned end date. A Stage ID field has also been created to better link projects to marketing documents and employee timesheets. Under Documents and Work Orders section, a new chargeable tick box field indicates if a connected document line is chargeable to a customer. Additional project related information is added to the activity form, and users can also can set an activity relevant for project billing. With regards to billing, a new billing document generation wizard allows users to recharge costs or bill a project. The billing wizard also collects open document lines and billable items connected to the project for invoicing. You can create an AR delivery or an AR invoice document based on the project data stored in the project management form. And the billing wizard ultimately streamlines the standard billing or milestone billing process and helps to improve efficiency. You also have access to a Gantt chart via the context menu in the project window, which allows you to visualize a project as a whole. This is all part of providing greater transparency and enhancing usability and increasing productivity when working with projects in the system. Here is an example business case scenario. Jason Butler from OEC Computers is managing a server and printer installation project for their customer parameter technology. There are three main phases of the whole project which have been created as sub-projects. James Chan from the purchasing department spends a day on site evaluating and planning equipment required for the project. A timesheet is entered into the system to reflect his billable hours. A meeting with the customer confirms the servers and printers that are needed to complete the first phase of the project. An AP invoice with printers is created and assigned to the relevant project code. The billing wizard is then used to collect all open document lines and billable items connected to the project for invoicing. The project overview and Gantt chart is then used to visualise and monitor the progress and status of the project. So let's have a look at this business scenario in SAP Business One Release 9.3. We are now logged in to SAP Business One as Jason Butler. A project has been created for the customer parameter technology for the installation of two servers and a series of printers. You can see under the project window that under the sub-projects, we have different phases of the project. We've got the server one installation, server two installation, and then phase three consists of the printer installation. If we drill down into the sub-project, for phase one, for example, and under the stages tab, you can then view the stages in detail and any stage dependencies, meaning you can define any dependencies across different subprojects to ensure they are completed prior to moving on to the next stage. You can actually define multiple stage dependencies. We also have the ability to define a finish date to indicate when the stage was actually completed, which can then be compared to the planned completion date. One of Jason's employees, James Chan, has just spent the day scoping equipment requirements on site at Parameter Technology, and Jason would like to create a timesheet for this employee to record the billable hours. Under Human Resources, we open up the timesheet window. We then select the employee, 
We adjust the date to when the timesheet was effective and the date at which the work was performed. The start time, and then we simply enter the end. You can also define an activity type. We are then going to assign the financial project that is linked to this particular timesheet activity. You can also define the actual stage of the project in which this particular timesheet activity was associated. So in this case, we're going to select the initial overall service and printer installation. We're going to show all the stages and we're going to select the planning stage ID. You can then select the labor type item that you would like to use from a billable perspective. And in this case, we're going to select the daily service labor charge. And now we're going to add this to the system. Under the project window and under the stages tab, we are now going to view via the context menu, the timesheet report. So we simply right click and open up timesheet report. We have got the ability to select a specific sub-project or stage that we would like to review the timesheets that have been assigned against these sub-projects or stages. From here, we can see the link between the project stages and also the recorded times billable by the relevant employees. A meeting with the customer is then scheduled to discuss and confirm the pending equipment purchase for the project. So we're going to create an activity. Under CRM, we select the activity window. And from here, the activity is going to be a task type activity. And we can assign a particular task type as being a project meeting. We can also assign the relevant business partner details with the parameter technology. Under the other details tab, we now have the option to assign a resource master data to the activity. So for example, if the activity required the use of a technician, you can then select the appropriate resource, such as a senior technician, and you can also select the relevant activity type. You can assign a financial project, which will then populate the project details below, or you can assign directly to a particular project stage. Let's assign the financial project and we're also going to assign the stage within that project in which this activity took place. And now we can add this activity to the system. The stage ID field connects marketing document lines directly to the project stage. If we now navigate back to our project window and we scroll down to the activities section, we can now see the project meeting that we've set up accordingly and we can drill down into that project meeting and review the activity details. We are now going to create a purchasing invoice for the printers that are needed for the installation. So to do this we're going to navigate to the purchasing menu and then we're going to select AP invoice. We select our relevant supplier and the item details. In order to link this particular AP invoice to the project, we now need to define project details. We enter our posting date and add the AP invoice to the system. The system message comes up once we've tried to refresh our project window that says there are unassigned documents that exist in the system. Do we want to assign these documents to this particular project? And in this case, we do. So I'm going to click yes. And we can see under the document assignment window that the AP invoice needs to be assigned under a particular project stage. And in this case, I'm going to assign it under the first project stage under project planning. If I then drill down under documents, I can then see I've got an AR invoice and actually two AP invoices that I have signed to this particular stage of the project. If we scroll across, we also have a field called chargeable. By selecting the chargeable tick box, we are then able to indicate that this AP invoice needs to be chargeable back to the customer.
It is now time to run the billing wizard, which will then collect all open document lines and billable items connected to the project for invoicing. We're going to, in the lookup menu, we're then going to open the billing document generation wizard. From here, we actually want to create an AR invoice for our customer. You have the option to create an AR invoice or a delivery document. We then need to select the financial project details and the customer that will be receiving invoicing. We then select the stage in which we would like the billing wizard to collect the relevant document lines from. You then select the source type, so in this case we want to include all open AP documents. You can also include any AR documents, work orders, recorded times or even project activities. From here we can see that there are a number of AP invoices that have been created on behalf of this project for this customer. We can also see the base document of those invoices, the item details, the item descriptions, quantities and the info price, especially, for example, around activities and billable time around those activities. In this case, we're going to select all of the AP invoices for billing and we're going to click on finish. What we can see here now is an AR invoice is then generated, which will then be assigned directly to the customer. So once the AR invoice is then generated for this customer, the line in the project stage will be closed and it won't be able to be invoiced again. Now that we've created the relevant billings for that particular stage, we would like to gain an overview of the project. And to do this, we can simply right click on the context menu and select project overview. The project overview window allows you to select the level in which you would like to view the project details. You've got the top or highest level, or you can drill down into the next level, which will highlight all of the sub projects relating to your project. From here, you can see the different stages, under each sub-project, the tasks, the descriptions, any work order, resources or activities that are also assigned, the start and end date and the progress of this project. You can also visualise this information by simply right-clicking and selecting Gantt chart. Again, the Gantt chart allows you to gain a visualisation of the overview and progress of your project. Well, this concludes our feature clip on project management capabilities. Thank you for your time and make sure you check out the other feature clips highlighting SAP Business One 9.3.